Hey everybody, wait, uh, there. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So if you have been following my channel, then in the last few days you will know, where are we, Kieran? We're in Madrid, ladies and gents. <laughs> we are in Madrid. So this is Kieran. So Kieran is my friend from Gibraltar, mm -hmm. the only person I know from Gibraltar. <laughs> um, and you've been amazing, obviously, helping me carry out the interviews and stuff like that. So huge thank you to you. <laughs> oh, it's been a pleasure. Um, so basically it's a Sunday night here, so we're going to record two videos basically going over our experience of what has been a fantastic weekend. So this is our second year of going to this Madrid preview party. Mm -hmm. Um, and this, I don't know how it happened, but this was better than last year, right? The whole experience? It really was. They really went out in the production value, especially this year. So personally, I thought it was fantastic. Exactly. So just like last year, um, I love how organised it is in regards to press. So number one, what I do like about Madrid Preview Party is they seem, to, if you apply for a press pass, they tend to kind of give it to you. So there was a lot of YouTubers that I'm friends with that I've now met. Um, and I think they were worried in regards to not being able to get a press pass because they don't have a huge subscriber base. Um, but they got a press pass. Um, so I got to meet some awesome YouTubers, Seb Talking, Sean from Malta, um, and yeah, so basically, Press Pass gets us two things, isn't it? So day one. So we had day one, didn't we? We yeah. had day one with some sort of um, meet and greet kind of set up with um, some of the acts from this year, uh, the competing acts, that is, for Eurovision. And then we had um, the next day, which is sort of different because we had the... Was it the turquoise carpet, a purple carpet? Purple carpet. It was purple, yes. Purple carpet. Like the stage, uh, purple themed, right? Exactly. So it was quite good. So the first day they obviously introduced the acts and then they had like a kind of a 30 minute thing, took a photo and they all went to tables and basically it was a free for all. So you had like one hour. So basically we had a strategy, didn't we? So I kind of accepted that I don't necessarily need to go to Loren, mm -hmm. uh, Lazala, Kalija? Any of the, Kadia? It's Kadia, right? Kadia. So, yeah, we believed, it, because there was so much, uh, uh, there was so much, um, attention for the matter that we thought, let's see who we can get, you know, let's go with the flow and, we met some lovely people, didn't we? And we really did. Uh, it was really worth it. And I'm having to remind yeah. myself who we in fact saw. So on day one, we saw Alika from. So this was in one hour. You did well. Alika from Estonia. <laughs> um, we saw Mimi Cat from Portugal, Monica from Lithuania, Wild Youth, and Gustav and Blanca from Polonia. Um, that was on day one. That's it. Yeah. And then day two, was we met something loads of else. People, really. Yeah. <laughs> so like, we managed to get pictures with people uh, rather than just interviewing them. Um, and. Yeah, so in total, I'm really, really happy with this year in regards to the people that are able to speak to. So I gave Kieran the kind of task of reflecting on everyone that we met and mm -hmm. basically, yeah, telling me your top five. <laughs> so we're going with day one uh, and day two, a combination of, at least this is for me on a personal level, where I found uh, that these um, acts, these artists, and uh, were just human and approachable so this is my top five so go your fifth let's do it in the fifth, fifth to and then first go yeah so we start from fifth yeah i placed fourth and fifth they gave me the same energy and mimi cats now mimi cats from portugal i thought this is your fifth this is my number five yes okay so she was just fun she was approachable she she just gave me that positive energy when i was there i was the cameraman for shane um we were doing a little thing there and she, she was just instantly, she was engaging with her eyes uh, towards me as well. And it was just, you know, it just didn't feel like a job. It was just natural. It was a conversation. I, I always judge people at these things I learned from last year to what extent they engage with you. Because you're obviously there and I do mm -hmm. introduce you. And if they make an mm -hmm. effort with you, that for me is normally a good thing. It's a good sign, yes. Um, my number five is probably the busker on day mm -hmm. two. Like uh -huh. genuinely lovely guys. Genuinely lovely. 
They um, were, they were lovely. And after the interview, um, the lead singer, who Sean from Malta told me their names, I can't remember his name now, um, he said, very nice questions. It's like, thank you, I enjoyed that Oh, interview. lovely, that's good. It's like, oh, cheers. So yeah, number five is The Busker. So who's your fourth? My number four, I put down, um, let me just check. It was Gustav from Belgium. Another one like Mimi Katz. He was a natural. It felt, it felt like a friend or someone you were meeting. Uh, as opposed to, again, someone doing a task. So it felt, we had what, a conversation whilst we were getting ready getting before we started recording. Uh, and it was just very natural. Like, again, the same thing as Mimika. I personally was was impressed by that. And that goes a long way, doesn't it, with um, being a fan of somebody and, and their work. So yeah, Gustav for me is my number four. My number four is Taya and Selena. So uh-huh. they yes. were amazing. And um, the, when they answered my questions, they were actually genuine answers. They were well thought through. They've got amazing chemistry. And the um, if you see my interview, someone pulled them away, but they did come back afterwards to say, sorry. Um, they were really, really, really sweet. And I think because I haven't properly followed Austria this year, like I don't think necessarily in any of my rankings, I've kind of praised Austria. But after seeing it last night, very different. Um, so as a result of the though of that, it's not necessarily they've not been on my radar. So I actually, pleasant surprise, enjoyed meeting them. So who's your third? Right. Um, my number three, and I'll I'll speak on the girls from Austria in a while. Uh-huh. Uh, my <laughs> number three is Alessandra from Norway. Queen ah. Queen of the Kings, and she was a queen in approach. Um I, we met her in day two, didn't we? Um she was the one picture I had, which we were just doing a little selfie together and it felt very natural. Um, I was observing her interacting with um, the other press members and fans and she had something nice to say to everybody. Again, eye contact, which is so essential when meeting your your heroes, your favorites, so to speak, right? Yeah. Uh, I loved her, I thought she was fantastic. I love Queen of the Kings already. Uh, it's solidified for me how well, how much that this girl deserves to be there and do well in the competition. So Alessandra for me was I mean, top notch. Our, our meetings with her, were, our meeting was very brief. brief. Um, so she's not necessarily. They, by the way, everyone we met was lovely. So this yeah, is a, well, this is just yeah. like a, this is just like a fun little task, just to say a little bit. There about... wasn't one of those moments where you meet someone you're a fan of and you're like, oh, what that has changed my mind. There really wasn't anyone like that, luckily. Uh, uh, but yeah, Alessandra was really brief, but it could be brief and it could be effective. And I was watching her again with other uh, people around us and mm. she was great. I think what I remember from Alessandra after the interview uh, finished and I was taking a picture with her, she mm-hmm. said she liked my accent. <laughs> she like, she did, accent. she did. I was like, oh, cheers, Alessandra. Um, my number three, which you'll be quite surprised of, is uh-huh. Jose. Uh-huh, yes. So I didn't interview Jose because I didn't really have any questions, but what happened with Jose? Well, he he's aware of your channel, right? And your yeah. videos. So, um, like I said, you never know who's watching and anyone in the room could recognise you. And a lot of people recognise Shane. It was a constant theme uh, throughout the press events and uh, later on in the evening with the concerts. So and he was lovely. He, he was. was amazing. So I was just standing there and he came over. He was like, Shane. And I was like, oh no, hold on a minute, have I lied? Did he say that? Have I exaggerated? No, he was like, I know you. He knew you. He, re- okay. he, he saw you from afar and approached you before you had a chance. And I was really shocked. So. I was like, oh my God. Because I know when I reacted to all the songs from Benidorm Fest, he actually was the only one actually that commented on that video and said, oh my God, thank you so much. And so the fact that he remembered me, I thought was quite sweet. And he was really, really lovely. Very it, calming. Very genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my number three. Who's your number two? My number two. My number two has got to be Monica from Lithuania. Yes. Stay, baby. She, well, I'm wearing this pendant again because uh, we, again, I'm someone behind the screen with a camera. And she came straight to me and grabbed this and went, chakra. And it was just lovely. It was a little conversation, you know. At the end of the day, she was having an interview with Shane and she went to me. You know, it's nice. It's I, I thought, again, genuine, genuine approach. Oh, yeah. And she had this energy about her, which was very zen. So I, I quite liked that. 
Yeah, no, she's uh, she's not that in my top five, but that doesn't mean that I didn't have an amazing experience with her. She's so lovely. Of course, yeah. Um, my number two is oh, I'm torn between my two and one. Uh, my number two is Mimi Cat. Yeah, like, she was lovely. So similar to Jose, as soon as I approached her, she recognised who I was. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had a bit of a chat about she that did. beforehand, like. A lot. I've seen one or two comments today on my channel being like, "Oh, you're so lucky. You you've you um, interviewed your favourites." And I said to you, "I kind of just wanted to do that. I didn't want to go in and interview someone that obviously I haven't necessarily ranked highly." Yeah, of course. That would Naturally, be yeah. Weird. <laughs> so, like, generally, like the beginning of our, of all of these kind of interviews, I tell them like how amazing their song is, and I and I said, you know, I think your song's amazing. She's like, "I know. I've seen your reaction video." Um, she was absolutely lovely on and off camera genuine like genuine she she is definitely one of the my highlights she she engages when she speaks to you she's looking right at uh, di- in your eyes you know mm. that that sort of reaction to it i thought she was lovely as well she was it was it was a highlight of my weekend seeing her so your number one my number one i was torn between monica and these girls but i must give them the first place because they acknowledged my existence um and that's ty and selena from austria so we were, must have commented on your oh, glitter. They did. I had a bit of a glitter makeup on the night and they just what was it? They did I love your makeup and instantly it became a conversation of me complimenting their makeup and back and forth. And it, the little things, ladies and gents, the little things which I think are go a long way. I mean, I, I thought it was really sweet of them. They didn't need to. They ne- didn't even need to speak to me. Mm. <laughs> so I, I, you could see because this is their first preview party because they've been ill, mm. right? And you could see they were trying to soak everything up because mm. Eurovision is like five months of absolute amazingness. If you s- totally kind of do the whole process and kind of soak up the love from the Euro fandom, they were so happy to. They be looked there. happy to be there, and like, absolutely, yeah, bless their hearts. They were lovely. Um, my number one's Gustav. Well, I this is it. Man. I was torn between all of these people I, I mentioned. That, honestly, so. Honestly, I love that man. So there was that really awkward moment at the beginning, wasn't he? He was like, have we met? And I was like, <laughs> no. Yes. And it was really awkward. He was like, I, we have met. He was like, I know you. And I was like, Gustav, you don't and that, know That was hilarious. <laughs> but it's, it's moments like that where we were... To be honest, we were a little bit stressed. Obviously, we were time constrained and we wanted to get as many interviews as possible. And and um, it was great to have like a random moment like that mm. uh, just to make us laugh. And, and exactly. you know, it was it was fun. It was a fun interview, I found. I think we established eventually that I think he has seen one of my videos. That's where we got to. It must but be, I think right? He, I think he was just embarrassed <laughs> and he was just like, it must be that. Um, but ultimately, <laughs> like for me... Obviously, I don't do this as a career, and I do naturally get quite anxious. So in some interviews, I do look nervous, because I am nervous, but I wasn't nervous with him. In fact, no. actually, there's once or twice that I touched his arm. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was and, very familiar. And you know, it was an icebreaker, because it was like, oh, I know yeah. you from somewhere. And then that the interview then just flows, right? Exactly. So, yeah, I think it was lovely. And, well, we're going about his performance later on, which... Yeah. But um, so other things to just remember from that um, press conference. Who was the biggest diva? Oh, girl, you're gonna put me in this situation. But as in, like, well, maybe maybe the girl was tired. No, no, no! <laughs> don't May- say that. Don't don't say about anyone that I met. In regards to a particular, that will be a country, secret. You will never find this out. Uh, in regards to a particular uh-huh. country, um, who uh-huh. had a whole makeup team? And was stopped. Oh, right. Okay, forgot about this completely. Huh. What a diva. We love her. Lazara. So, oh, literally... Oh, she was a vision. Beautiful. Compare it to Monica. So, we were lining up to see Monica, and the person in front of us had finished. And then the, the head of her delegation was just like, hold on a minute, she needs to put some lip gloss on. And so she just manually puts on her lip gloss. It was... And it, then we carry on. But, like, Lazara, I think after every second interview, it was, it was, she <laughs> sat down, and she had a team of, what, six people... She brought the entire department store. It was fantastic. Like, her I, makeup. I mean, she, 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 she was beat. She was beat. Flawless. I mean, for everyone who, had the, who saw her in the night or went to the, these press parties, you would have seen in person right to front. She was painted for the gods. So she was diva in the greatest sense, right? Exactly. It's like she was regal and, oh, beaut. Um, but what was I going to say? It was quite good because I got a picture with her. Lizard. You did? You got a picture with her. 
I did, yes, so, yes, So, yes. as it's my number one this year, that made me very, very happy. But, we do, like, again, strategically, we thought, why line up for half an hour to speak to any of the big guns, like Finland, Sweden, France? I was happy with how we approached it. At the end of the day, all of these, uh, these are acts, these are musicians, mm -hmm. and you've got to appreciate their work. And when you see them waiting and they, they have a lesser line, go and support them and you never know who you're meeting and how much of an impact it might make on you. And mm. I loved these people who I personally got to meet and, well, be yeah. the cameraman for, so... I mean, there's loads of Wicked. people that, that we met that we haven't talked about. Like, Peak Jacks were lovely. Mm -hmm. Sunlights were lovely. So many they, of them. They were genuinely lovely. Um, right, the other thing that I said in regards to... Because we obviously had two nights. We had night one, which was basically uh -huh. better on festness with some other stuff, mm -hmm. and night two. So we'll do night two in a separate video. So I've asked you to prepare <laughs> your top five performances of night one right so i'll get right to it yeah I need first to night in. phenomenal great performances so hard to jot down just five and narrow it my number five and i believe this was almost the closer of day one noche entera vico of course i mean what a bop i mean it's it's just fantastic well on a personal level when i first watched it actually even before the snippets, the studio cut, I did not rate it. I thought we got get lost in the mix of many pop songs. Then you see it live. You see that staging on Benidorm Fest and it comes to life, right? And I mean, look at it. It's number one in Spain, in the, um, the charts. It's everywhere. People loved it. And that audience was electric oh, when that well, came it was on. Always, it, was it was always, always going to be, going to be this, right? A room full of Spanish Euro fans. <laughs> yeah. And Notch and Terra comes on. <laughs> I mean, it's it's an absolute bop as well. And she added this little remix at the end, didn't she? Like like an instrumental, like a dance, like a club sound. Yeah. Which is, so my number five, that was a party yeah. moment. I haven't got anything else to really say. She's my number five as well. Like, yeah. I just, I just wanted to see that live, right? And mm -hmm. oh and my she gosh, delivered. she looks like Nush. Nush101 from YouTube. Like even, uh -huh. in, even in the flesh, she looks like Nush. I need to mess her and tell her that. I like, can see what you mean though, yeah, yeah. Sean, <laughs> Sean, the guy from Malta that we were standing, well, we spent a lot of the weekend with him. Uh -huh. He said that to me. He was like, man, she looks like Nush. Um, number four? My number four, what a vocalist. Uh, Diodato, right? From Italy. Uh, is it 2020? Yeah. See. Si. It was indeed. Fai Rumore. What a fantastic performance. So he did a version with a live violin. I believe, yeah, it was live, a live violin with his power chords. That that voice that came out of that man was just, I mean, we've seen him perform before, but this was magical. I was just gobsmacked. I appreciated it very much, so. I have some things to add that one. Uh -huh. uh, we have to wait. Okay. Um, number four for me is Carmento. Uh-huh. We've got very similar top. She mm -hmm. is absolutely phenomenal. And we met her. And, um, or the next day on the purple carpet. Uh -huh, yeah. So I just had to tell her, I was like, you were amazing last night. That vocal, insane. Yes. Um, that was amazing. Number four for me, Carmento. I'll follow that through. That was my number three. Carmento Quiero y Duelo. And my God, did she, that emotion. She was awesome and bent on fast. And she brought it. She copied and pasted it and perfected it on the night. Those vocals, everyone in that room could feel that. You could feel the energy uh, in that room when she was performing and people went silent. You could hear it. You could feel that passion. Love her. We, we asked if she was going to do it next year and she pretty much said no. Pretty much. Uh -huh. um, which is a shame because I think she's amazing. And yeah, well, I have nothing else to add. She's a vibe me. for me. Um, mm. Okay, so that means my number three, right? Um, oh, gosh. Um... Calliope. Don't okay. Know. That song touches me. <laughs> that song touches me spiritually, emotionally. Oh. Like, I'm just obsessed. And sh we met her. And use the word got... spiritual, which I've been using all weekend. <laughs> we met her the next day as well. We were only saying today how lovely she was. She, she, you had a great, uh, um, like, encounter yeah, I told with her, her didn't you? Her. It was like literally <laughs> what, like, a, a life's goal to see her live. So, um, yeah, easy. Again, another live vocalist who was phenomenal, yeah. right? With those bustle tones. My number two. My number two. Why did I have a number two? Right. Soraya. Soraya, who was Ooh. 2009 Spain. 
with La Noche para mí. What I personally La liked. Now I'm from Gibraltar, right? So I'm familiar with Spanish music as well, and I'm, I'm bilingual. I speak Spanish also, so I understood her. And now I was. How old was I? Fifteen when this song came out. So this is like a hundred years ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> it just teleported me back to my teenage years, and for me, it was personal. So I had to rate her up there. And again, after all these years, so great to finally see the woman live, and she was fantastic. You were, so you were, creaming, creaming, wow. you were creaming over the other song she did. I did. I mean, I love her repertoire. I mean, she's fantastic. I but Mi Mundo it. Sin Ti is just... It's epic, right? Every... Probably every uh, Spanish Euro fan would, would understand that sentiment very much. Um, that's something I was going to say to you. Did you notice that she wasn't hosting Night 2? Was she only ever going to host Night 1? I think she was like, the, the word was madrina, which is what we use. She was more like, um, I, Ruth Lorenzo did it last year, where she... But she did both She nights. did more of a presenting moment. Yeah, she did day one only, Soraya, right? Yeah. And I think, I think they split it up. They had Soraya on day one, and day two we had a trio, didn't we? We just had the guy from OJ we had, Spain. We had the guy fr- um, from uh, OJ Spain. We also had Ruslana and Suri, right? Were so they hosts? I think they're hosted, yeah. The no, because we missed the first <laughs> song. There we go. This is the part. I mean, I knew this because I read into it. <laughs> so we, bad time management. We came back and Kieran just takes forever to get ready. So we missed the first song. We missed the first one, which is um, the cover of Love, Shine a Light, I yeah. Came to Find. Yeah. So that uh, was a shame. But we walked in with um, Blanca, um, uh-huh. which actually, my number two is Blanca. So it was really weird. <laughs> it wasn't weird. So, like, obviously, I was really, really fortunate this weekend to meet um, a lot of subscribers. And, like, I, when I was watching it, like, I could see people looking at me, <laughs> um, being like, Rude, oh, yeah. is he enjoying this? And even one person said, do you like Blanca? And I was like, yeah. And then his mate was like, <laughs> nah, I've seen your channel, you don't like it. <laughs> I was like, oh. Um, well. But no, come on. Like, this isn't even me. One or two people have commented saying, basically, I'm pandering to the Spanish kind of intense fans in regards to turning around no, on this song. No, I, I can wholeheartedly tell you he does enjoy it because I was watching him whilst I was reacting to Blanca Paloma. Uh, Blanca Paloma. Which brings me to my number one. Blanca Paloma. <laughs> so I mean... W- w- the, w- the version that we watched, hold on a minute, was uh-huh. that the four minute version? So she, or was that the second minute? I, I get confused she did, she did like a remix for day one, which as I call a la slow-mo. So like that dance break vibe that Slow Mo gave us last year with Chanel. Mm. So that was, I think that went on for maybe five minutes. So it wasn't the four minute cut or the three minute cut even. And then on day two, I think she did a different version. I think she did more of the, the Eurovision edit, at least all oh, the one better said, the one from Benidorm Fest. Okay. Um, with a bit of a twist. Um, both nights, fantastic. I mean, that woman is just made to sing. My, she was born to sing. My a hundred percent. Um, my um favorite moment of the weekend of Blanca is when she made a point to come to the top and support that little Spanish girl. Yes. What's her name? The Spanish. It's Solia. Yeah, like her. She she she, she stopped what yeah. she was doing and she came over to the balcony and she watched her whole set and gave her a big round Which of applause. We'll go on about Soler, I believe, in the next video, but. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, my number one is Dear Datto. Like, I cried. Like, I actually cried watching it. But I think that's just packed with so many emotions. Memories. I was telling you, like, when they did that Eurovision concert where he was in that Verona stadium on his own, I was in lockdown in Goa. And, oh, it just, it, good and good and bad tears. But that song, just, again, like Calliope... Oh, and obviously with him doing it in Turin with the dancers, it's, oh, he, I love that song. It was memory infused. Like when I... How amazing was... I know it's so obvious for us to say. I know you're musically tra- tra- trained and I'm not, so I'm not really qualified to say it. But how insane was his vocal? The, for me, there were three standout vocalists in the entire thing. Well, let's say day one. I'm not going to include day two. That's, I, I think I mentioned them. Well, Blanca Paloma is an obvious... Blanca vocalist. Paloma. And Carmento Diodato. I mean... For me, with putting comparisons aside, because it's all different, you appreciate from different angles, right? He His voice is just so powerful and striking, and I understand that. I mean, personally, I did not rate that originally in 2020. It was not in my top 10, but I've learned to appreciate it over the years, because it is a banger. It really is. It's insane. Um, and he, he made me 
more of a fan this weekend, I must say, uh, witnessing his vocal. Well, he must have just released a new album because as I left Milan, there's posters of him everywhere. Mm-hmm. So he's obviously just... Well, as we established, I live in I live in Italy, but I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was hilarious when we had um, the San Marino band or even Alessandro, right? Uh, where we could have gone, oh, you can said something in, in Italian. Well, I did, and, I did my interview with Pete Jack. And then Shane cannot said, continue oh, the conversation. Where are you from? They're like, Florence. I was like, oh, I live in Milan. They're like, why don't you do the interview in uh, Italian? Italiano. And I swear, I was like, because I'm Italian. Um, and then I had to explain why, um, which I have edited out, because <laughs> it's private. But um, uh-huh. there's no excuse. Um, but I felt bad. Even with Alessandro, it would have been nice to engage with a bit yeah. of Italian. I should have just said ciao. Yeah, ciao. Come and stay. Ciao, Bella. I mean, you're living at, come on, girl. Like, he could have prepped something right. I know. In, in Italian. I know. <laughs> um, right, have you got anything else you want to add in regards to the press, day, day one. the purple carpet, and night one? Mm, something I haven't mentioned. Uh, no? It all. It all felt... It went so quickly that it was. There were moments where I guess the waiting's always a bore, right? But it was the people like that, that we met there were like the audience, like people were generally nice. Whereas last year I found it. I guess, I guess it was the the first one with Benedict with so many acts, uh, like they did last year. But this year it felt more natural. People were actually enjoying themselves and. It was a good vibe. It was a good atmosphere. I think, without bringing in too much dramas that have happened in the past, okay, there was a lot of support in that room for every yes. act. Yes, 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 yes. So we were fearing there might have been no, the odd not fearing, moment. Not fearing, but I, I, yeah, Madrid, yeah, it was an amazing. It just was a very loving environment, from what I could gather. Um, right. Well, then let's leave that there. Uh huh. Um, thank you for joining this video, and you're going to join me in video too. Indeed. Okay. See you later, guys. Um, see you. <laughs> Look forward to part two. <laughs> Ciao. 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 See you Adios. Later.